name is Dermot Preston. I am uh, the British Jesuit Provincial. I've been provincial now for just over three years, so it's just over halfway through my tour of duty. I came uh, to this job, actually I was recalled from South America, where I worked as regional superior in Guyana, the British Jesuits now working with the Indian Jesuits over there in South America. Um, before that I was here as assistant to the British Provincial for four and a half years. And before that I worked in South Africa in Cape Town as university chaplain in the University of Cape Town for six years. The, the British province of the Society of Jesus is, is a quite a, it's a very old province in that way, or the mission of the British Jesuits. And I think what that has done is it's given us a huge history and experience going back over 400 years. Um, we've had three periods of history really, all quite different. One is the time of persecution, individuals working with aliases under threat of death all the time. Then there's a period of consolidation through the Victorian era where we were building schools and parishes and institutions. And then more recently, um, developing in, especially in works of spirituality and social justice ministry. Uh, so I think all of that gives the, the British province a real richness of experience that is there, and we can draw on that. And still today we have a huge number of apostolic works we do from parishes to retreat centres to university chaplaincies to Jesuit refugee service and all of those. I suppose the role of the, the British province is we are we are right in the heart of a secularising tidal wave across the world, especially in Western Europe and North America. Um, so issues to do with religion are no longer accepted as, as red as they would be uh, as 50 years ago or so. So that secularization, I think, is a real interface. Now, some would see that as a, a terrible challenge, but I think it's a really good challenge because I think it leads us deeper into the gospel, the heart of human beings, and it's challenging us to respond. How do we respond to people in a secular age uh, who don't believe in God? And I think that, at first frightening, uh, could actually be very, very stimulating. And I think it is. I think there is major challenges, uh, partly because the inheritance that we have, we, we're, we're big into institutions, so especially our schools and our parishes. And I think what that is doing is that means that we have a lot of institutions which are bedded down, where the challenge for St. Ignatius would be to say, well, we need a flexibility. We need to be able to move from place to place to uh, to take on different challenges and institutions are not the best things to be able to do that so I think that's a really big challenge I think the, again the challenge of secularization is very important um, it's how to translate the gospel the good news into terms that would be understood by people who don't have the basics of understanding even the presence of God so who is Jesus and all of that and again that may scare a lot of people but I think that's a really good challenge it's not unlike the challenge that St. Paul had right at the beginning of Christianity which is how to explain Christianity to non-Jews to the Greek world to the, the, the secular Roman world and uh, he did so brilliantly but it's, again that's a good challenge for ourselves I think the opportunities come from the newness of what is there. Um, there are tremendous opportunities in terms of, of freedom, of an understanding, uh, the use of things like the, the new modern media. Um, how, how do we um, use those things which some would judge as being evil and terrible and wrong and new, and because they're new, they're wrong? Uh, I think that's a really good uh, opportunity for us to be able to say, no, how can we preach the gospel in, in, different, in different ways? The geographical missionary uh, aspects of Christianity, where we go to far places and preach the good news to them, um, maybe all of the corners of the world now, most of them have been touched by Christianity. But the dimensions now of enculturation and movement into other groupings is not so much geographically, but it's more intellectually and spiritually where these worlds have never been touched by Christianity and it's a, it's a matter of reaching out and preaching the good news in dimensions which are not necessarily the far corner of the world 
but actually the far distant part of a virtual world and uh, in, in a language that is not understood. So it is an opportunity um, and I think it challenges our imagination. If we don't respond to that challenge then really we're not very good at kind of uh, being apostles of the gospel of Jesus. Best achievement? Um, I do, I'm, I'd, I, I'd hesitate to say best achievement. I, um, I think others would have to judge that because what well, you know, best is a the one I think it was an important one to do, and I'm glad that we did it. And as time goes by, more and more uh, was movement uh, back into the university chaplaincy in Manchester. Um, I think my predecessor, Michael Holman, as provincial. Um, took on the, the challenge of moving into uh, Oxford chaplaincy and and working with the young adults that were coming through that university and I think that was great. I, I think Manchester is a, a huge challenge because it's the biggest university in, in, in Europe um, and we have a really good team that is is there and I think you can it's it's very good to s watch them preaching the good news and you can see that that good news is effective. And so as a platform of ministry, I think that's the one that I look at and say, yeah, I'm glad we really did that. As I say, I'm halfway through my provincialate, and so I should have some idea of where we're going. Um, but the, I suppose the, the, the issue is, as people would say, if you want to make God laugh, you, uh, you tell him about your plans. And the issues that I would have and may not come to pass of course but I think there's a real need at my time just to really to start to streamline the British province works uh, as I said we've got a huge kind of spectrum of works that we do but I think given the limited resources that we have whether it's kind of money or manpower or whatever or attention or energies I think it's, it's a really good um, time Ignatius of Loyola would say that you've got to concentrate you've got to concentrate on the best the margins rather than necessarily doing all good things and I think that's that's my challenge how to do that in our choice of province ministries all of the things we could do 